I'll never forget the time I worked as a priest. I was a young college student looking for ways to make some extra cash. And when Pastor Phillips unexpectedly died of type 2 diabetes, I knew the church would be desperate for a replacement. I applied and got the job almost immediately. And that same week I was officially sworn in as the new pastor. The job for the most part was a bore. All I did was ramble on about the misadventures of Jesus and listen to old people repent for their sins. However, I would soon find out that's not all I would be dealing with. It was about a month after I was hired when an elderly woman came storming into the church. She was very distraught and requested that I exercise her daughter. Confused, I responded that this was a church and not a gym. The woman annoyed went on to explain that her daughter was possessed by a demon and she needed me to extract it from her body. Oh, I said. I guess I can stop by and see what's up. Thank you, the woman graciously said. She then wrote down her address and told me to stop by tomorrow. I agreed and walked the woman to her car. And after watching her drive off, I went inside to see what I would need to properly exercise her daughter. After hours of research, it turned out all I would need is a Bible, a wooden crucifix, and just in case things got out of hand, a bottle of holy water. Apparently the word of God was enough to ban the demon back to hell alone, but you never know. The woman didn't live too far from campus, so I decided to call in for first period and try to make it back by lunch. I took an Uber, I told the man it shouldn't be longer than 20 or 30 minutes, and if he chilled around the corner, I'd smoke him up. He agreed and parked his car a few houses down. I then approached the front door of the house. Something odd happened. Although it was 80 degrees outside, I could see my breath clear as day. What in Sam hell I said to myself? I brushed off the concern and rang the doorbell. After a brief moment I was greeted by a butler. And not only was he a butler, but he was also a dwarf. Caught off guard by the encounter, I unfortunately laughed right in the little man's face. I tried to play it off and said I thought of something funny but he could clearly tell I was lying. No pun intended, but luckily the awkward exchange was cut short when the woman from the church came running into the room. Pastor Douglas, thank God you're here. She's being possessed as we speak. Come quick. The woman grabbed me by the hand and led me into the living room where a middle-aged white woman with a scary skeleton face was tied up on the floor. The woman was screaming racist profanity and shaking around all crazy as white foam disgustingly flew all over the place, including my brand new shoes. What the fuck? I said while looking at my Air Max Nikes. I then grabbed the woman by her shirt collar and asked her what the hell her problem was. Quickly I realized her mother was still in the room watching us, and I regained my composure. Excuse me, I said. I then pulled out a wooden crucifix and my Bible. Demon, I screamed. Today I shall vanquish you and free this woman from your treacherous ways. The woman on the floor began to laugh in a deep, scary voice that made her mother burst out in tears. Holy shit, I nervously thought. I then shuffled through the Bible as I searched for something to say. 
I found something I had highlighted from the night before, and without hesitation I began to scream it. The power of Christ compels you. The demon stared at me for a moment confused, and then it broke out in laughter. What the fuck does that mean? The demon said. It then continued to laugh and mock me. Shut your fucking mouth, asshole. I yelled out in anger. But the demon didn't stop. He continued to laugh right in my face, which only further fueled the fire that currently burnt in my soul. All right, enough. I then pulled open my robe to reveal a bottle of holy water. When the demon realized what I had, he stopped laughing. Oh shit, little man. What, what you finna do with that? The demon nervously said. I'm going to make it rain. I then grabbed the bottle and poured the entire 16 ounces all over the demon's body. The demon began to scream in horror. Its body convulsed in pain as the water tore through its flesh like acid. Holy shit. I said to myself as I looked at the empty bottle. I then looked back at the possessed woman and her scary skeleton face began to fade away as she continued to convulse on the floor. Oh, Diane, her mother cried out while running to her daughter's aid. She then cut her free of her restraints and thanked me for my help. No problem, I smugly replied. That demon honestly stood no chance. Not against me, at least. Anyways, I gotta go. I'll see you on Sunday. I then turned around and made my way to the front door. But just as I placed my hand on the doorknob, I heard the elderly woman cry out in pain. I turned around to see the demon had returned. It was levitating in the middle of the living room as the household items start flying around. And sadly, the elderly woman had been impaled by a broom. With her last breath, she told me the code to her gun safe in her room. And I ran up the stairs as the demon began to fly after me. I made it up the stairs and ran down the hall. I ran into the woman's room with just enough time to close and lock the door behind me. I ran to the gun safe and nervously entered the code. And inside I found three grenades and an AK-47. Holy fuck, I thought as I loaded the gun and prepared myself for battle. I then aimed the gun at the door, which was moments away from breaking in. Demon, I'm warning you. The demon continued to bang at the door till it came flying off the hinges. I warned you, demon. I then began to unload on the demon, which sent its body flying backwards and over the stairwell, crashing down below and landing in a position similar to Peter from Family Guy. With my gun drawn, I ran down the stairs and made my way towards the demon to confirm if it was dead. Demon, I said while kicking its lifeless body. Phew, it's over. I then called the police and told them what happened. And after they came to take my statement, I was allowed to leave. As soon as I got home, I called the church to tell them I was resigning. And luckily, they completely understood. And they offered me a pretty nice severance package. Which went on to pay for my college tuition. I never saw that demon again. And I hope I never do.